Hi everyone, welcome to the fourth part in our video series on budget impact analysis and health technology assessment. Moving forward with the theme that we had in our previous video of theoretically connecting both budget impact analysis and cost effectiveness analysis, we're going to introduce this idea of the cost effectiveness affordability curve. Let's go. So when we're doing cost effectiveness analysis, we seek to answer if an investment in a particular health technology is efficient. What a cost effectiveness analysis does not tell us, however, is if an investment in technology is feasible. The conduct of the corresponding budget impact analysis is where this question of feasibility is usually answered, usually by using the methods which are discussed in the first two videos in this series. In the theme of the last video, we ask, what attempts have been made to harmonize both budget impact analysis and cost effectiveness analysis? What comes up in the methodology space in recent years is the concept of the cost effectiveness affordability curve. Let's go and find out what that is. So to introduce this idea, let's recall the concept of the CE plane. And we have our change in costs being on our vertical axis and our change in effects being on our horizontal axis. And we have each one of these points, which are icers, right? And these points come out as you know a distribution on this plane, which is a result of our probabilistic sensitivity analysis. The way that we're supposed to go and you know conduct ourselves around this uncertainty is through the use of a threshold, right? Which goes and tells us what portion of these simulation here, right? What portion of that is cost effective versus what portion is not cost effective here. With those points lying below and to the right being cost effective and those lying above it being not cost effective. Now, what we want to do is that we want to go and add another constraint here, which is going to be our delta C bar, which is going to be what states of the world in which the costs that are could be borne are affordable in that case. Like what is this upper limit on costs that we're able to bear um, altogether? What this does is that it eliminates a whole set of points from the get-go. These are colored in red that we go and we have here because these are beyond um, what we're able to afford, right? So we can view this, this new constraint as a refinement of that result. To summarize, the inclusion of our upper limit, delta C bar, which is the changes in our costs, refines our analysis to only consider feasible states of the world. Geometrically, this makes the corresponding CAFC lower than our CAC for all values lambda. It should be noted that our intercept will not change uh, compared to that of the CAC. To go and look at this geometrically, right, we go and we have you know, our usual picture of our CAC, which is denoted by this blue curve here, right? That takes on the interpretation of the probability of our health technology being cost effective given a particular threshold value at each point. Again, following the same rotation that you usually do for your SEAC. Now with your cost effectiveness affordability curve, right? we're going and we're saying this is the probability that our health technology is cost effectiveness and feasible for every threshold value. Right, The feasibility is going and entering in a direct manner. So. This is, you know, another attempt, right? And to a certain extent, it's a more refined attempt um, at going and incorporating considerations from budget impact analysis and cost effectiveness analysis. I hope this video goes and illuminates the concept uh, conceptually, and I hope you've enjoyed this series so far. Take care.